Well, welcome back to Main Street Living. Now, Cheryl Quincy, I know you guys are on the East Coast, but on the West Coast, fires all up and down the coast. It's been crazy. My hometown, my parents said the air quality is awful. It's, it's so terrible to see. Uh, I can't imagine being out there. And I know we're going to speak with somebody who's out there. Yeah, Cheryl, uh, when disasters like this strike, um, North Valley Animal Disaster Group volunteers, in partnership with emergency services, they team up to evacuate, rescue, and simply shelter in place at-risk animals. So here to explain a little bit more in detail is uh, John Moretti, uh, Executive Director of North Valley Animal Disaster Group. How are you today, John? Great. Thanks for having me. Hey, um, well, we uh, first of all, we appreciate what you're out there doing. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your group? Sure. We started in 1999. I am a uh, retired Chico firefighter. And at the time, I noticed while going to some of these wildland fires, we have some uh, economically depressed areas where people don't have horse trailers or their truck doesn't run or it's just, you know, it's difficult to get animals out. The other thing we have in this area is we have beautiful foothills, but the people have to work and they come down into the valley uh, where, the, where the employment is. And the fires always start at three o'clock in the afternoon when people are at work. So that they first thing they do, of course, is set up roadblocks so they can't go get their animals. So we started this group uh, back in 1999. We went and spoke to the, uh, the Butte Fire Chief Association and the sheriff said, you know, what do you think about this? And um, they put a lot of parameters on us. They didn't want a bunch of yahoos running behind the fire lines. So they made sure that we had uh, 16 hours of training, the fire line training, the Nomex clothing, and actually even radios that have the same frequency. So when we go up to these divisions, we contact the division group supervisor and request permission to enter their division. And then they'll look at the, the fire conditions and say, sure, no problem, or no, not today, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, for example, wow. this fire, we haven't been able to do a whole lot the first couple of days. Today we're getting in, we're making some good evacuations. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's so heartbreaking to hear these stories because animals are like family to many people and their livelihood as well. So when you are able to evacuate animals, I mean, what's the process? This, this cannot be easy. No, one of the most important things is identification. We pride ourselves in getting 100% of the animals back to their owners, which, which can be difficult during hectic times. When you're going to a particular location and they're telling you an address, well, the house is burned down, mm. the mailbox is burned down, so you're not positive. So we're using lad longitude, different things to make sure we identify, uh, uh, things like that. So it's worked out pretty good. Uh, we do have uh, two temporary shelters, one for the small animal, which is actually the old county hospital. And then I don't know if you can see behind me, but the um, we have a livestock area out in fields that can house about 150 horses there as well. Yeah, John, and I see that you're currently in the process of rescuing animals as we speak. Uh, what what fires are you specifically working on right now? Right now, we're in the West North Complex. It's a little confusing because several fires have gone together. So they've gone to an area <laughs> command. Uh, uh, so that's actually what we're working out, the title, like exact title. When it's on the east side, it's actually Plumas County. On the west side, it's uh, Butte County. So Cal Fire is the one that's in charge of this fire here. Okay. Oh my gosh. And you mentioned the shelters. What types of animals are you helping? I know you said small animals, large animals, but you know, what specifically? Yeah, on the small animal, we have, um, uh, I forget the exact numbers, about 150 dogs, uh, 200 cats, oh. 30 chickens, 20 rabbits, uh, two turtles, and a guinea pig. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and yeah, and you're currently in California right now, right? That is correct. Yeah, Northern yeah. California. The, uh, the large animal shelter has... Um, about 125 horses, and they wow. have some sheep and goat as well. They have a lot of livestock here. Wow. And I know reuniting people with their animals is going to be tough. Are you scanning for microchips and doing things like that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And then every animal also gets a number written on the side. Uh, the small animals have special paper collars we can put around them with a Aww. specific number. And, uh, you know, this is the computer age. So of course, everything is digitized and QR yeah. codes on everything. So it's worked out pretty well. Yeah, well, that was great, John. And uh, really quick, can you let us know or can you let the viewers know how they can contact you guys if anyone needs uh, to request assistance? Sure. Our hotline is area code 530-895-0000. And it isn't 100% that we can go behind the fire lines. Like I say, we have to check with the safety officer and the division group supervisor before we do it. But uh, uh, today we went to the briefings in the morning. Things are quieted down a little bit. So we're we're hoping we can get into the perimeter areas today. 
Wow. Absolutely. Bless God you, man. Bless you guys. Yeah, for doing all of that for the animals. And I know everything is dependent on the weather as well. So thank you so much for joining us on Main Street Living. Great. No problem. Thank you. All right. Stay all safe. Right. All right. A lot more coming up, Quincy and Danielle on Main Street Living. Are you searching for love during the quarantine? I know it's not an easy thing to do right now, but we have some great <laughs> advice coming up. So stick around.